What's up, everybody? Welcome to Between Two Tales, episode eight. My name is Kevin. I'm joined by my co-host, Dave. That means we've done seven different stories so far, yep. which is uh, kind of crazy, given yeah. that you know Dave and I tried to write one script last summer and we couldn't get it done. But throughout recording this entire thing, we developed seven different stories. <clears throat> now, are they all good? Probably not, but I think we got a few rough diamonds in in the stories that we created so far. So I'm looking yeah. forward to seeing what we created today. But Dave, for all the new people here, um, yes. tell them how the show works. Yes. So for all of you joining us for the first time, what we're going to do, as Kevin already said, we're going to write a story. We have an hour and a half, 90 minutes to do that. Kevin's going to generate five random words, and we have to use those words in some way, some shape or form, have to use those words within the story. What you'll find is those words really do shape and uh, create the story for us. So we just got to kind of roll with them. So you'll see that happen. And at the very end, what we're going to do is match our story to an AI generated story and then see who uh, who wins. Yep, just to let you guys know, we haven't lost yet. Um, I think last week was the first time the AI actually came up with a semi-decent story. And then we said that whatever that AI came up with could have been like a perfect origin story for one of our mm -hmm. characters, right? Yeah, yeah. <clears throat> it's getting so better. Kind of it's getting better. I mean, this number yeah. eight, it might be even better this time. Yeah, we'll see. Maybe. All right, so let me share my screen. We will get rolling. All right, one spin. Ooh, I kind of like... The clock has started. <clears throat> Creed. Okay. Layout. Okay. Update. I just saw Robot and Flesh, and I'm like, <laughs> you know, that could turn into something interesting. You know what's funny? When I saw creed i instantly thought of there's a new one coming out this year at some point and um i thought you're gonna say the band it could be the band it could also be the scent because i know that's also a fragrance but uh um, oh, i have yeah. no idea um and i said oh creed and the layout i'm like oh you about to lay someone out there you go but flesh and robot i mean listen you have robot and I was just watching this the other day, uh, the Terminator, right? Yeah. You have a robot. You start thinking, I, robot, they, they take over the world. Either mm -hmm. either that or uh, some kind, you know, Terminator, I, robot, kind of same premise, moral, to a certain degree, right? Just they're going to take over the world. Let's just keep it top level there. And then um, you can also do a take on it. Like, uh, you ever seen that movie, Her? Yeah, that's what I was just thinking. Yeah. Okay, perfect. So I'm like, yeah. hey, in the movie Her, right, for those of you who haven't watched it, watch it. Um, more, well, basically, the main character falls in love with his uh, OS system. Joaquin Phoenix. Yeah. And, um, you know, could make take that idea and turn it, you know, have a robot that this person loves or just a robot is able to have those relationships let's just say uh doesn't have to be a love story uh, but then you know you have the word flesh i just remember well flesh he was doing some uh intimate things with his operating <laughs> system through a person <laughs> and and uh what's what's it called <laughs> i thought it was just so funny in the end towards the end he was like I forgot his operating system's name, but he was like, am I the only one that you're having these conversations with? And she's like, no, I've had millions of these conversations. And, yeah. And then to ask how many other people are you having this conversation with right, right now? And I think she said like either a couple hundred or a few thousand. And it's just like, <laughs> holy, holy. At the same time, um, for those of you, uh, we should also say that the voice um, actress is Scarlett Johansson. Um, oh, I didn't know that. 
Yeah, yeah. So, you know, you keep that voice in your head. So this is who he's talking to, Scarlett Johansson. You know, you, you'd be pretty heartbroken too. I know I would. <laughs> but um, you have the flesh, though, is such an interesting – I instantly think of bad things, but it doesn't have to be bad. We need a pound of flesh for your evil doings. <laughs> um. I don't know why, but the first thing I thought, you know, of course, I said bad things, you know, like ripping flesh or something like this. I don't know why. I don't know what uh-huh. my brain is. Flesh. Hmm. And that's also a word that I don't think is used at, as often as you, re- when you really think about it. You know, you use other words, you know, skin, uh, beef, meat, and so, and so on. Um, <laughs> right, right. What is the definition of creed? So. Isn't that like a honorable thing? A faith, a system of it's it's like I thought it was more of a promise of, of a type of promise, but let's get the kind of a set of beliefs or aims that guide someone's actions. Yeah. Or um, a system of religious faith, Christian That's what I thought faith. was a formal statement of you now this has a formal statement of Christian beliefs. You can also just make it a formal statement of beliefs. Um, oh, yeah, the, the third option here, a set of beliefs or aims which guides uh, or aims which guide someone's actions. Yeah, that's that's I think that's um, that's a definition I've always really honed yeah, on. I've never really thought of it as a Christian, uh, yeah. Christian thing. All right, hold on, hold on. So what if there is a lonely... Developer, <laughs> I'm with you. Make it he, depressing. Uh, tragically loses his wife mm. in an accident. Or partner know, doesn't have I to know be where you're going, which is going. To, is, 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 I'm gonna creep some people out in a second once you're done. He programs this AI. Uh, he uses, you know, his wife and him used to send voice memos back and forth. So he takes all those voice memos, okay. trains this AI to sound exactly like her. Uh huh. Uh-huh. Programs it. To just fit um, her nuances, her speech patterns, and whatnot. Mm -hmm. And then somehow, let's just say he embeds all this data into a chip, which he then, he digs up his wife's grave, embeds this chip into her cadaver to try to bring her back to life. But then she becomes... This evil, <laughs> what this evil killing machine Enter. that's able to control uh, technology around and causes the Terminator to happen. Okay, so we take part of the idea <laughs> and instead of bringing up her dead body, her cadaver, uh, they, um, yeah, you know, maybe in this world, you know, you, he's a developer, right? Or maybe he's some kind of top guy or something like this. That was my way of incorporating flesh. I just yeah. <laughs> well, I'm gonna I'm gonna give you an alternative here, and it kind of reminds me of this Johnny Depp movie, um, Transcendence. Um, but I don't recall if they put him in another body. I think they just had his mind, sort of like an OS kind of deal. I I think I only saw it once. One. There's an interesting show that I just started watching. I haven't really uh, watched it yet uh, fully. I haven't watched it in a bit. It's called Peripherals, I think. And Mm. uh, basically, these people from a certain timeline, they can go into a game. And when they tap into this game, they enter, enter a real body, but it's somewhere down in a parallel timeline in the future. Mm. So they're able to the people from the future timeline, they hire people from this other timeline to go do like tasks for them in these, in these bodies, which are real, but, uh, it's, well, I don't know, it, it's, so I don't even have, so like, I'm, if I'm, if we incorporate the word robot, I'm thinking, you know, you take this, you know, okay. to say, say this developer guy. Okay. You have heard of the stories before. I'm not crazy. Let me start off with that, which is probably not a good way to start off. But you have heard of stories where 
typically men, men have lost their wives and it drove them crazy. And, you know, it's been report, it's been recorded in history that one, you know, a couple of guys have dug up their, their deceased wives and then dressed them and perfumed them and all this stuff to make them like live among, you know, at the house. What I saw recently was a guy who made like a, I think it was like a wax figure. Oh, right. And so, and this thing looks pretty good. Like it, it, like, you know, what is it? Madam uh, Tussauds or whatever it's called. I mean, this thing could be in there. It looks uncanny (laughs) Valley to the highest degree. Um, and I'm just like, and when, the, when I first saw the video, I was like, oh, this person, I, I thought the person was, alive. I thought it was a real person, I guess, that's alive. And then the camera keeps moving and I'm like, oh, that person's eyes don't do anything. Like <laughs> uncanny valley, you start to feel that uncanny and it's like, are they just staring at something like with the same expression? What's going on? And then you're like, wait, that's not real. But my point is. You take that, <laughs> that guy did it with wax. This guy can, because he has the ability to, well, give him the ability, can do it with a robot. And he puts, he embeds, you know, these thoughts and memories. There was also another movie. Well, there was a, a, a movie or a series that was on Apple TV. Someone similar, you know, the actor had cancer or something like this and then want, didn't want his wife to be alone or something like that. I only saw the trailer and I need to watch it but it puts his consciousness into this other thing i think it is something of flesh like um i, I don't want to say like a, like a well maybe it's like a clone but we can just put in a robot give it flesh you know uh-huh. some kind of flesh you know made in the lab or whatever i don't know uh-huh and uh but then the thing is, it's like, where do we go with the, with a story like this? Like, okay, he makes his wife a robot. Depends on how we want to take it. It turns <laughs> evil. It lives happily ever after. It, um, That's not a good story. It cheats on him. Hold on. Maybe, maybe when you put the consciousness in this thing, it's not a full consciousness. Like, this is more of a discussion on, like, if you take partial memories and you and life lessons etc put it in something else with its own consciousness like you're in, trying to embed a consciousness but it's not a fully formed one at least not the one off the person that you took it from uh does it have different outcomes you know this thing may not love him just because it doesn't you know have the same feelings necessarily towards him uh um, think- he can program it to love him, but it'll learn. Yeah, but if it's like to... a robot, you know, let's just say it's a robot in the future that ultimately comes to its own, like, I can make decisions for myself kind of mindset. Its own yeah, content. yeah, that's what I'm saying. Like, you know, eventually it it'll learn. Anymore. Yeah. It'll learn to maybe fall in love with other people. Right. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah. It could do that and totally crush this man. This man lost his wife twice. <laughs> Which, which is Ooh, what if um, we give it a great Gatsby ending, and the, the 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 person it falls in love with, the robot falls in love with, he he just goes on a, a vengeful thing and kills our main character. The robot? <laughs> no, no, no. The the man that the robot falls in love with, the the new guy, and to get and that this new guy to well, get. Then- Okay, I see what you're saying. All right, so like, if I if I remember correctly, for the Gatsby, right? So you had Gatsby who was in love with Daisy, I think, and she was married to another dude. I don't remember his name. And then, you know, they had some parties together, you know, whatever, whatever. But I think if I remember correctly, ultimately, who ended up shooting and killing Gatsby was like the mechanic. Yeah, because the mechanic's wife partied with Gatsby because Gatsby No, the mechanic's wife was cheating on the mechanic with Gatsby. Daisy's husband. I thought the mechanic's wife was cheating on the mechanic with Gatsby. No, nah, Daisy's husband lied and said um 
because she died with by a car accident, Gatsby's car, but he wasn't driving it. And so he lied and said he was, and he didn't care or whatever. You know, he's just some dude with a lot of money. He doesn't give a damn pretty much. And then the guy oh. came and killed him. But Daisy was the one that was driving. Daisy's the one that basically, basically, when you really boil it, <laughs> Daisy killed her husband's mistress. And then the husband blamed Daisy's new, you know, old right. long lost boyfriend. Right. Right. He blames his her long lost boyfriend. And so basically both mistress and whatever it is for a guy, for they both got taken sure. out of the picture. <laughs> well, you're really thinking that's what happens. Both of them get taken out of the picture and then those two go and live their life happily still happily ever after after the people that they've been hooking up with basically just both die because of them. That's true. Yeah, now that you're right. It's been a while. Like when you, when you yeah. put it like that, you're like, man, this story is story is whack. <laughs> kill off, kill off. I mean, hey, people are cheating, right? But like this man, the story is pretty much just kill off both of them, and then the, the the original couple, the people who are actually married, go off and go live their life, <laughs> and then everyone else, like the other two, die. We can make our main mm-hmm. character the vengeful, jealous person he's the one that has the murderous plot or trying to do evil things the guy yeah yeah no i think okay no matter what happens the guy has to die our main character yeah or be put in jail be put away permanently so it, it basically the robot that he created for his self for love and all this other stuff and, 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 you know, uh, greed in a certain one aspect, if, depending on how you're thinking about it, mm-hmm. uh, it's not greed, excuse me, selfishness, uh, again, you know, turns on him, right. Love someone else. Then those two are like, we need to get rid of him. Cause he won't stop. Like this man's obsessed. And he is, you gotta be obsessed to make a robot of your dead wife and trying to recreate her consciousness, right? So you, you already know he's obsessed. I got an interesting idea. It might be and hard. They, and then they kill yeah. him to get him out of the yeah. way so that with a robot and whoever this new person is, what guy or girl, whatever it is, another robot, I don't know. They go on with their life. And they, I, I got an interesting they, idea. It might be hard for us to put together within this time. But have you ever seen those movies where it's like, there's like multiple events happening that like lead back to the it comes full circle but it has it happens in like a chronological order between like the beginning like let's say i can't think of a movie off the top of my head but like uh let, let's say the robot goes out and starts mingling with five guys guy number five meets his demise to guy number four and then Guy number four meets his demise, guy number three, and, and so on. It leads back to <laughs> the main dude somehow. And then and then we go back to the beginning. Oh, I see what you're saying. You're basically I saying, saying I don't know if you can think about a film that, that's kind of sequenced in there. Yeah. Uh, I don't know if you've seen one like that. It sounds before. like you're saying call flashback to the to the front that we'll end up showing and give it it'll be more context later on later <laughs> in the story. Yeah. Um, you could, we just have to know what the story is so we can give a proper flashback. Um, and then, you know, just have it be like, all right, this happened. I mean, we could, we could get through the story and be like, all right, let's take this section and make it first. Or, yeah. You know, do the flashback sequence. You definitely could. Yeah, you know, we could do, we could definitely do that. Um, that'd be kind of interesting. Um, update. Well, robots need to update. He down like, exactly he downloads a new update to <laughs> to his software. That's right. He downloads a new update where uh, now the robot can have its own agency, and that's when everything goes <laughs> awry for our main character. <laughs> and then he goes after Bill Gates. Layout. You know, you can lay someone out. You can lay out something. You can have the layout to the home. You can have yeah. Lay out to the land, lay out to, huh. you know, you can lay out the parts of the robot when he's building it. Yeah. What if, um, can make this a little more spicier, add some betrayal to it. 
<clears throat> I mean, he, my boy's getting killed. He's being betrayed. But what other betrayal do you have in mind? Well, he's a programmer, right? Not, not just because you're a computer programmer doesn't mean you know how to build a robot. So what if his best friend is an engineer? Oh no! Helps them build <laughs> build the robot. And then they they're the ones that run off together. Yeah. Oh no! <laughs> I like it. And when our main character finds out, oh man, he's, he's never been. This, so man, this man is more heart heartbroken. Yeah, he's more hope heartbroken than he was to begin with. Just his death, man. Now he's really messed. Up. See, that's this is partially uh, evil. Exactly. You thought about it. <laughs> you, I think you started it. Uh, okay. That would be interesting. I yeah. mean, we're just ruining this guy's life. Oh, yeah. I mean, but it's not going to be a happy ending for this, this character here. <laughs> no, not at all. He might commit, you know, the S word. I won't say it. Mm. We don't want to get uh, our, our, our video taken down. Mm hmm. What do, they, what do they say? Uh, put an end to his to his world. That's right. Or and they put the end to his world. Maybe, maybe the robot uh, wife. Um, you know, you know. There's some evil stories of of young women. I mean, I'm sure it goes both ways, of course. But I I just remember there was a uh, it was a documentary of some sort of a girl who pretty much talked, there's a better word to describe it, but talked her boyfriend into like killing himself, committing suicide. Oh, God. You know? But like, uh, I think he was suicidal. And then she, it, it, on the, you know, on the day that he committed suicide, right? They had, we were having a conversation and she, she said something, something like, why don't you just do it? You know, pretty much like you're just constantly saying you're going to do it, but you're too chicken or something like this, like some crazy crap. And he went and did it, right? Uh, which landed her um, in jail. Um, so, manipulation, right? I wonder if the robot wife manipulates him into ending. Manipulates him. both men. Well, yeah, ultimately, yes. But I'm saying for the end of him, manipulates him in the end, in that sense, to end himself. That might be an outcome, or the thing attacks him, or he there's no, you know, whatever. Right. Hmm. That would be interesting. How would that work? We she don't need to know that right now. She makes him take out a life insurance claim on himself. What does a robot need money for, man? <laughs> for her new her new life with his best friend. She'll just go hack a a, a, a <laughs> bank ATM. Um. She could probably calculate trades faster than anyone else, anyways. Um, so we have basically our antagonist, more or less, is his friend. I mean, betrayal, but he won't know that. Yeah. For a I think a, the true antagonist will be this robot. Robot wife, yeah. She'll manipulate his best friend into That's thinking true. that she's in love with him. Maybe she is. Or maybe she's just a curious robot, just just learning with zero feelings. All right. So main mission, <clears throat> I would say, is for sure. Kevin to to uh, you know pretty much bring back and continue to love his wife. Hmm. That's really what that's really what this really comes down to. Just... You know, what? I'm feeling a Greek programmer. Let's see what names come up here. Yeah, we just get some names. These are two Greek. I'm not looking for people from the Odyssey here. <laughs> um, yeah, I do it say common Greek names. Uh, Nikos. Nikolos or Atlas. That can't be for today. Oh, it is for today. Theo. Theo. Gift of God. Demetrius. Demetri. Dimitri. Dimitri. Georgios, Giannis, Constantino. Giannis and Georgios. Heard those before. Uh, Vasilis, Giannis. Giannis and Tento Kumpo. Um, There's also Alexander. True. Alexander. 
Alexander always sounds like a good, strong name. Alexander. Lucas. The great. Luke. Well, Alexander ain't going to be great in here. This man's about to be taken. No, no. Oh, Andrew. Nicholas. And um, his best friend. We'll just name him Alexander. Alexander. His best friend. Uh, Deepesh. Vishnu. Indian? <laughs> Get some diversity in here. Uh, we'll name him Kevin. Kevin Fun, since he's evil. Ah, oh, you mean Dave White. Yes. Can't be me. You said you wanted diversity. I agree. Dave White. See, that Perfect for a villain. That doesn't sound like diversity, but Kevin Fun? That sounds like diversity <clears throat> right there. Nah, see, it just doesn't sound evil. That's the problem. You're right. David White doesn't sound evil. I agree. <laughs> David Thank White, you. you know, when I think about pure evil, <laughs> the, the name David White just pops up. Uh... Bodhi, Kumar, Neil. Well, why don't we, uh, you know what? Actually, as I'm looking at this, I do remember the name of um, Joaquin Phoenix character. Um, name? Theodore. Theo. Theo. So that could be the friend's name in honor of her. All right. Theodore. Theodore. Theo. And Andrew. Who's Andrew? The other dude. Oh, I put it down as Alexander. Oh, okay. Alexander. Yeah. So and we need robot wife name. Alexander with an R-E instead of an E-R. I'm just messing with you. Um, robot wife. Alexandre. Um, Mia. That's the eighth most popular name for for a female in twenty twenty one. Mia. Mia. You know, we have to, you know, Mia is the way to go. We have to use it. All right. Mia. <laughs> Mia. 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 Theodore. Mia. Alexander. Now, how shall Mia? The human Mia. Meet her end. Meet her untimely end. I was yeah, thinking was... car crash. Flying yeah. car crash. Oh my god. <laughs> Since we're in the future here. You don't have to make it so true. Well, I guess it, you know. A self-driving car crashes into her. Now Elon Musk is in trouble. A flying um, car. Well, I agree that it has to be something traumatic because I feel like if it's something where all of a sudden it's just fast, you know, it feels unresolved versus if there's time to, I don't, it's, I don't want to say that it, you know, it makes it feel better or something like this, but to I got a certain extent, there's more time for people to get. I got one ready. A big tragedy. Let's say the hyperloop exists. You know how it's supposed okay. to go. I, yeah. It's supposed to go. 80 million miles per hour. Something like that, yeah. The engineer the night before didn't show up to fix the track. So the Hyperloop, while swinging away, hits the certain part of the track and just flies off the rail. Now it's not only her death. But others? It's uh, the whole cart. Or I'm the whole, to uh, kill more people. It's a great tragedy. <laughs> yeah, well, we can also ground it in real life currently. Um, someone pushes her into the hyperloop. <laughs> it could, this could be in New York City and someone pushes her. Someone robs her and then pushes her into the, <laughs> the hyperloop track. For whatever reason, I think it's, you know, it, it happened to a young lady. I don't know if she survived or not. I think she's in critical condition. But she's not the first and she... Fortunately, will not be the last. But you know, uh, she was a teacher, and uh, she got shot by uh, you know a student. You know, um, so it could start off with this like very hyper you know trauma event uh, that plays out too much here in the U.S. <clears throat> and you know. That's unexpected. I mean, we still like to think that schools are the safest place for someone to be 
uh, even though that thought is starting to change a bit just because of all the school shootings. I see what you're saying. Hmm. Now the question is, do we, there's also another thing of like, I'm trying to weigh out if that's a appropriate thing to do. Uh, I feel like we could probably avoid it. Probably like, I think there's so many ways to have her die that we could probably avoid no, that well, one. But, you know, God's truth over here is there's really, you know, especially when it comes to traumatic ways, you know, the death is the death and it's going to hurt no matter what. Right. Um, so we you have, want to give her a hero's, our, a hero's yeah. death. Is that what you're saying? I do because it'll be a nice contrast. Thank you for asking that. Cause I think you just helped me like really put together that thought, but it'll be a nice contrast from who me, a uh, robot wife will become, you know, that they, they really are two mm. different two different beings. And since robot wife ends up killing and doing all you know, is kind of evil in her own right, um, we shouldn't have the real wife be evil. She should be someone that anyone can look at and we have a quick scene. You know, that's why I was thinking like this school thing because you know, a lot of these teachers do a, a wonderful job and they you know, they be out here you know, sacrificing themselves to save other you know, their students. That's a as far as I'm concerned, a very heroic act. Yep. Uh, I think everyone else would agree. But um, I'm okay. trying to think of like what else would put someone, and you know, especially in this case, we're talking about a wife, a female, in a position where she can be a hero, um, and not have it be like you know she's in the military, and you know she dies from a military related thing incident. She sees the little kid walking towards the train tracks off the platform. She pulls that little kid away. And sacrifices herself to the train lords. Will you... <laughs> <laughs> but in in doing so, slips and falls into the oncoming Hyperloop train. That is the most like unfortunate, the most unfortunate thing ever. Do they have kids? Alexander... And Mia? Nah. Okay. No and there's also sacrifice for your own children, right? Um, there's that, yeah. Um, she has to do something noble. Some, run into a burning building. Um, you, know, you also don't have to yeah. show the act. That's the way you get, you know, you, you portray this thing without some of the... Uh, Again, maybe not the best word choice, but some of the morality issues that I'm, I'm thinking of is you don't show the act. You know, it could take, it could start up at a memorial service or, you know, something has already happened and we hear about what she did. Mm. I don't think anyone would want to show that act. I, I guess it depends on the story and how, what they're trying to say. But since it's not the main focal point of this story, doesn't make sense to show the act. Um, right. right. Man, actually, like, it's so like heinous. Man, there's like a bunch of other ideas that are, are hopping. Like, maybe there's, I was thinking like there's rogue already, like rogue evil robots running around and she can, she can see uh, someone from the evil robot trying to kill, like, you could. Uh, but then, but then why would he want to like, turn into like a, a vengeance story for the main character? Yeah, I it. feel like he'd be like these robots. You know, it'd be like Will Smith and I Robot. You know, and it, instead of Will Smith coming around to like respect, I guess the robot or that partic one particular robot as an individual is more like the other way around. This man learns to hate and wants right. vengeance on them, on these robots. Um, you know. The only other, I'm trying to think of like more natural, I don't want to say natural, common, unfortunate situ, like situations where someone may pass or be killed, like an action that would have them have an untimely death. You know, of course, there's always. Well, school can be on fire. 
She uh, opens That's the door. She lets uh kid out, but in doing so, she just she gets trapped back. in there. Maybe she went, she, you know, she, she got a couple hours. She went back to go get the rest of her students, uh, got trapped. And after she let the last kid out, you know, burning stuff maybe fell and trapped her in. Maybe she couldn't reach some of the other kids and some of the other kids died too, but she, she died trying. Yeah, I can do that. I think the, I like the fire one better. Um, well, better than the school shooting. Oh, it still feels a little raw. All right. Well, listen, let's go with it. Good thing is it's just a draft. We can always change it. So we'll do a school fire. There's been an electrical surge in the power line. Sent sparks everywhere. Or uh, a uh, oblivious cook left the gas line on and it just started smoking a cigarette. And it blew. <laughs> and it blew up. Um, <laughs> well, we'll, you know, we don't need to know exactly how the fire started. But <laughs> the fire happens. Okay. So. Smoke alarms started going off. Or no, no, well, no. What we can say is, so let's, we could, I think we can start the outline. I think the smoke alarm shouldn't work. And she gets notice of the fire. Because what kind of it. school is this? This man said it's this a, it's, more it's funded. A cool not up to any standards school you've ever seen. It's just public school. <laughs> no. Uh, um, if, if that ever happened, it'd be stuff like people are in trouble. <laughs> There's so many investing some, and it deserved to be in trouble. Um, if, that, if that ever happened. Someone forgot to replace the batteries and their smoke alarm. They get. Um, I don't think it works that way. Aren't aren't they like? <laughs> isn't there like a power source like built into the wall? I would assume. I don't know. I'm sure there's some schools where it's batteries, but um, we are in okay. the future. So, so we want to we want to we, we give it a we want to give we want to start off with the fire, right? So we'll say we'll just say clap for now at least. It's a raging fire. A teacher is in front of the class giving her a lesson. No, we should start off as the janitor saying, what's that smell? We're going to get to that. Open the door. We need to establish a a regular day. (laughs) They're going to do like giving a lesson. Kids are engaged. Some must sleep or whatever. Who knows? All right, now this janitor who's also in this class learning too, alongside the kid, <laughs> he's gonna open the door and be like, "What? What? What's that smell?" And then he, the whole thing is gonna be disintegrated. Um, what if? What if we instead? So you 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 want this smoke alarm not to work? The, the one way you could have that work. No, I want either have like a fire that's too wild that just spreads too fast. Yeah, too far, too fast. Listen, she works in an old building. That's not the standard. And then you could have like the fire alarm doesn't work. So what happens is you know, you hear some 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 bustling and hustling down in the hallways. She mm-hmm. ignored it at first. You know, thanks maybe it's just some kids running in the hallways even though they're not supposed to. Here's a whole bunch more commotion. Maybe some screams at the last it goes out there, looks, pokes your head outside and see everyone running around. It's like a madhouse and, and something's on fire further down the hall. Uh, and then she, you know, has to go into action. Yeah. Yeah. That's your work. She can hear so, someone screaming, fire, fire. Teacher, you know, here's teacher the, next door. Um, emotion. Teacher next door yelling fire, fire. Commotion outside in the hall. She ignores it at first, but here's some screaming. Blood curdling scream of fire. Outside to investigate, telling her kids to sit quietly. All right, she finds a fire across the hall. And it's moving fast. She 
tells the kids to run for mm-hmm. their lives, for their That's souls. Right. If you want to live, run right now. All right. The kids, you know, get up and some begin to make their way out. Make haste, children. All right. Through all this commotion, through all of this uh, stuff, right, the teacher realizes uh, one kid or whatever, let's just say, in the bathroom. is missing. Oh, that's the a new one. Is missing. Another child reminds her that Kevin <laughs> went to the bathroom. The teacher doubles back. She finds and runs into the bathroom. She finds young Kevin hiding in the stall, frozen in fear. That's right. She picks him up. He's frozen with fear. She picks him up. Oh, here we go. Right, picks him up and opens the door to find the fire. Uh, to find the fire has engulfed her hallway. The hallway. That's right. Yep. She is trapped in the bathroom. All right, I got you. Hold on. Right? Okay. She opens the window that only opens so much. So, like, I remember the windows I used to have in my school, like, uh, my middle school, whatever. I don't know why. I'm just assuming she's in middle school or something like this. Those windows, like... You, if you had like a skinny kid, could probably squeak through it. But like a, a grown adult, it's just dude, you, you can't get out of that window. Yeah, I know what you're talking about. And yeah. So like, you know, maybe you know, instead of having this kid perish with her, as we were discussing, Kevin, lucky you, that's why you're here <laughs> to write this story. Uh, she's able to like get him out of that window, but she sure as hell can't get out. Okay. Yeah, she, that's like one of those, those slim windows that's not like, she has to like lift them up, right? Yeah, I like lift them up, put them, through, like it's a tight, even for him it's a tight squeeze, but it's doable. And let's just say it's like two stories up, so he's going to survive, but you know, he maybe breaks his leg or something like this. But he <laughs> lives, but listen, 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 in the hospital, because what's going to happen is, you know, there could be a scene where it's like in the hospital, he tells the story to the cops or whatever, or the doctors, and then like her her uh, her heroics are now like the full picture of her heroics is on. Um, I got it. I got you. She lifts Kevin up through the window, and as Kevin is falling, falling, falling off the building because he went through the window, the he sees the explosion come out of that same window. Bro, my man said no casket. What are you doing right now? <laughs> <laughs> no. Where, why would this why, why, why would this floor all of a sudden explode? This man said someone put bomb material inside. <laughs> Bro, the, fi- the fire it just uh, lit the wrong thing on fire. Yeah, the toilet <laughs> or the urinal. <laughs> She pushes Kevin out the window and breaks a little bit hits the ground. Okay. The teacher. And we'll just say it like that. The teacher, you know, perishes in the fire. She tries to leave her husband. Oh, what if she leaves her husband one last voice note before perishing? Why why are you trying to make people cry, bro? (laughs) Um, I mean, the teacher already ruining his life. Let's make it worse. (laughs) The teacher calls her, her husband and leaves a goodbye message. Jesus, me about to make me feel some sort of way. That's how you know it's a good story. If you feel, why else are we doing this? Man, she perished in the ruin, fire. Other than ruin Alexander's life. I know. <laughs> Kevin, <laughs> Kevin, the child goes on to live a life and write stories on a podcast later <laughs> on. Kevin goes on to tell the tale of what happened. We find out her name is what's her name? Mia. 
and uh, you know whatever. It's me. Uh, it was rounded out a little bit. She's all over the news for her heroics. Okay. Now, meanwhile, Alex Alexander is at work. No, no. What we do, what we do, is now we 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 time jump two years. So this situation happened. We time jump two years, and then now we catch up with Alex, and he's. You know, it could be his his apartment, you know, living a disheveled life. And then we come to find, either we come to find at that point that uh, the teacher in there was his wife or, or we, or we put him somewhere in this scene before we time jump. Um, No, you don't want to show his real time reaction. No, I don't think so. Because we haven't built him up enough yet. I don't think it would make sense. Like, we'll just be like, oh, this random guy, I feel bad for you. But, like, we feel bad for her, really. Because, you know, we saw her go throughout her day, a normal day, and then this stuff happened. She was a hero, and she passed away. This young boy was able to tell the tale of what she did, so now the world knows. I mean, that's something that could be in another version of the story, too, where we add him. Because it's like, what are you going to do? Like, by time, realistically... Unless he's another teacher, okay. Well, now that doesn't make any sense because no, he, he needs to be a programmer. Yeah, exactly. He has a... to be capable enough to do this whole thing and not for like a middle school teacher. Um, as a harder bridge to go over, I think. So it's like, say if he's working elsewhere, it's like, what's he, this man's going to teleport to the school the second he, like, by put like this in real life by the time he finds out his wife is already gone i was saying that he um the scene i was thinking of was he's just doing his thing in his office and he gets a voice memo from his wife and you know he's because of the behavior that we've established beforehand that they send voice memos back and forth you know just do uh cutesy voice memos he thinks that you know it's a uh, oh, this is nice. It's gonna cheer him up because he's having a bad day, but he can't listen to it right now. <laughs> just man, it's just at every turn trying to destroy him. Um, but that okay. we need I to think, know what what I is think, said in said voice memo. But yeah. we can we can jump. Listen, we'll we'll yeah. I'm I'm um. Uh, well, the good thing is there's multiple versions, but for this version, let's go ahead and add something like that where she perishes. In, uh, we can, we can Alec. jump. So we can Alec. jump forward. Alec, Here, here's a good one. We could jump forward. He's like uh, not this put together person anymore. He's, he's that's just, what I'm saying. Yeah, that's why I think he's, he's, a, he's, he's like, a slob that doesn't really want to get out of bed. Right. I think you were on to something there. He, like he he plays that voice memo his wife sent to him every single day. Mm. Out of trouble. Why not play something happier if he gets so many? That is it. Well, what do you, what do you I like? Don't I don't, I, I don't know because I've never been in said situation. I, but I, what, I, what do you want to like hear your, the last words that? Not over and over and over again. Not not, <laughs> yeah. not over well, and maybe, over again. Maybe he's a master. I feel like I feel like <laughs> I feel like I would be like if I get so many, I'd be like, oh, let me go back to a day where like she was happy or like life was good. And like, she sent this love, not like, all right, this, yeah, I'm sure you listen to it, but like, you don't want to don't know is that he was at the Verizon store that day and he picked up the new iPhone 90 and he lost all the other voice memos. And that's the only one he has. <laughs> you know what? This sounds <laughs> awfully close to something that actually happened in real life. When I used to work at Apple, <laughs> um, that was, I was helping this lady, kind of similar. So she lost her husband sometime before, like recent. And she had like an iPhone 4 at the time or something like this. And she was just like, the whole time we were talking, like she was cracking jokes, like having a good time. Like I thought uh-huh. everything was good. She was just like, yeah, the phone's just not turning on. I'm like, all right, the phone's a little old. So like, in, you know, at that time, like iPhone 6 or 6 plus, like whatever, I don't know, whatever it was was out so it was like i yep. four and i'm like you know this phone's a bit old like probably time to update she's like yeah i haven't gone around to it i'm like all right well let me try to get it on if not 
you know, this phone has definitely lived this life. Um, it might have been like iPhone 7 or something, like eight or 8. Like, it was like, there was a decent, it was like a five-year gap. So I was like, it might be time to up, upgrade your phone. So, like, I try everything. Nothing works, Kevin. So I'm like, yeah, you remember how I said you might have to upgrade your phone? Like, it might be time. Like, this phone cannot turn on anymore. I think it had water damage. Then she decided to tell me only then, right, the whole time, laugh, jokes, you know, okay, yeah, blah, blah. Only then she goes, uh, well, I can't do that. And I'm like, yeah, I'm thinking it's like, oh, you don't want to spend money on a new phone? Okay. She says, no, my husband recently passed and those voicemails are on this phone and I have to have See? Them. Yeah. This is fantastic. This That's is, terrible, bro. I, I can't tell you how based on it. real life now. I remember that story to the day I died. It's like, oh my God, we have to get this phone to work. Did not get it to work, luckily. But here's the point, sort of. You brought Verizon. She went to Verizon. They gave her a new phone. And because it's Verizon, I think a lot of the carriers do this now anyways, all the voicemails were just transferred over from Verizon's server. Like they, they hold them. Mm. They they hold on to those, and that so was the day where I I was like I think they do, but I'm not 100 percent sure. She came back so and told me that all of the voicemails transferred over. I was like, oh, thank God. So what you're saying is that Alexander meets you at the Apple Store with his old phone. He's like, Dave, I need your help, my man. Man, <laughs> all I'll say about that is you. When you work with technology, you run into situations that are Isn't that kind of funny that I didn't know that story of you yet? I almost hit it on the head. Exactly. Yeah, it was pretty close. So I was like, you're, <laughs> you're, you're making me relive a pretty, like, it, it was probably among the top, like, 10 most, like, traumatic things that's ever happened at Apple Store. Dave or, isn't crying by the end of this. She almost, I'm pr I might have shed a tear. <laughs> back then, I think she got, or at least I was fighting back to like, she started to explain the situation more. I was just like, oh my God, like this is something else. I think, I think I was either holding back a tear or, or I had to go in the back and just let one escape. And I was just like, oh man, this is, we, we got to see what we can do. Dave, but, you're not crying by the end of this episode. Nah, man, she, not because, that, because I lived through that now, I have a hardened uh, exterior and, and interior off the stone. <laughs> Uh, so he looks well groomed, put together, but he doesn't listen to the call. To the call, okay. So I just all right. Maybe he listens to various voice memos. All right, we, we won't we won't let him listen to the one traumatic one. We'll we'll let him. We'll give him some some relief in his life. In the morning, he li he listens to the voice memo where his wife tells him tells him good morning. Blah 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 blah. Mm -hmm. I got your. I got your breakfast made for you, your favorite <laughs> breakfast. I hope He's, you have a listen, great listen. day. He starts his day, yeah, with something along those lines, right? He starts his day listening to the voice memo, uh, pretty much saying, you know, have a great day, and I love you. Uh, I miss I, I love I'm going to miss I you. I love you forever. Can't wait to see you when I get back. <laughs> I thought you said you were trying not to give him grief. <laughs> that going pretty long, could you? Uh, it's two years later. All right now, the morning. getting ready for work. I was listening to the voice memo. All right, so he listens to it. He then gets ready for work. For work, he's he's a man without I don't know. without I without, think... without a will to live. I think we're building a reputation for giving our main characters horrible lives now that i'm thinking about it that's okay i mean listen we have to give them something to either fight back from or succumb to unfortunately it sounds like we're gonna make alex be a victim of his horrible situation <laughs> but you know that's the thing sometimes such is some, story such is, such is life sometimes you put the chips in you win and sometimes you you end up losing, uh, with the will to live or w without the will to live. Okay. Whatever goes to work. Now we have to be able to bridge about 30 minutes. We have to be able to bridge this gap of he's sad. He comes up with a plan that actually might give him a little bit, you know, put a spark in his eye again. 
in a sense because he's the update of this uh from his company of the what if what if this technology wasn't working right you know what i mean like the technology to do this wasn't working correctly what if it's a secret like a secret project that his company was planning on releasing he knows he un since he's working on it because he's a talented programmer he knows the potential of it and he he connects the dots and he sees the potential that this this uh code this program could quote unquote bring his wife back to life because maybe it's a code just to generate like uh, i don't know an ai assistant or something for general use yeah for companies or something and then so he's basically. working on the code and he takes, he copies it, and then he refines it on his own, without. Uh, I mean, under 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 the company's, without the company's uh, guidance or supervision. Right. Yeah, I mean, without them knowing. Um. He. All right. I'm trying to bridge a gap of like, why would this man in the position that, for whatever reason, I have him in mentally, he wouldn't be aware of what they were up to. Um, no, he is. Because he's he's a he's a programmer on the project, but he and it's gonna and, it, and on this particular day just dawned on him like, well, as soon as he it could that they're rolling out this new program. Here's what it's gonna do. He's been selected to be a part. Oh, okay. Of like the, the testing. Group. Yeah, to re, to okay. build it. To build it. No, no, no. That yes. Also, is what I'm gonna say is. He's also been tapped on the shoulder to test out the AI capabilities of this thing. Yeah, so he that, can take that, the code or Like in his more personal life, like, like, hey, we want to see what this looks like when you have it out and about in the real world. Like, use it and report back to us flaws and whatever, like what you, what you find. Okay. So he goes to work. He's, I'm going to do like some skipping, but he's been tapped on the shoulder to test out the new AI to be a beta tester. Yeah, yeah, exactly. For the new AI program in the real in the real world. Um you know, and is to report back Report any, let's use some programmer knowledge, language, report bugs. Yeah, sure. Report any bugs, report any fixes. <laughs> report bugs and, you know, just general thoughts. I mean, let's, but here's the thing. All right. Let's say, you know, we could also say like, all right, he's doing this. He's like, he doesn't really see an application for it. Or that's not what I mean. What, what I really am trying to say is he's doing it. And he's like, okay, yeah, this is what's, what works is when he's fixing, blah, blah. Like, it's very I much more it. about the work until something happens, the inciting incident. Something happens, and he's like, wait. I yeah, got you. The yeah, idea I, of, like, I can actually – I think I can use this for my own purposes. I got you. Go ahead. Hit me so, with it. Let's say they give him uh, – because you need data to train AI. Let's say yeah. they give him a vault of a – vo like, a vault of voices, like a – default voice to take oh, home oh god yeah and he 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 realizes the power of it because he trains the ai on this voice let's just say it's a morgan freeman voice so he gets morgan yep. freeman's voice now he now he's able to program it um and like play around with it when he realizes that the ai is taking the speech patterns and forms of this voice like every it's perfect near perfect everything it's saying he can have simple conversations with it and it'll sound like morgan freeman's talking to him uh and that's when he's like wait i have years of voice memos that's right from my wife now i can have morgan freeman and my wife <laughs> in, my, in my house yeah he learns slash realizes he can program it to sound like his wife and he does so. So now, you know, this thing has become a bit closer to him. <laughs> you know, this project 
has you know taken on a new meaning to him very a very self-serving yep. meaning right all right so now we have that now we also have to bridge the gap of like let's also discuss uh, one of our words is robot right so okay yeah so these guys engineering buddy. He's, he's, yeah so uh, his engi- was it what we what, the, theo Theo, Mr. Theo. So we have 23 minutes, so we have to do a little bit of jumping, right? But now this project takes on new meaning. So that's just the AI conversational aspect of it, the voice. Let's just say Theo sends him a project that he's working on. He built, like, some humanoid robot. Ah, Theo comes over to, oh. to, to like, have a drink, a drink with Alex. I see where you're going. <laughs> Alex shows him... Mm-hmm. capabilities of this AI. Let's just say, since we jumped a little bit, by this point, he's able to have full conversations with this AI, but it's just on the computer, right? Or on the phone. Like, it's not a physical thing, right? So... It's, it's like Alexa or Siri, right? Exactly, right? So he show, Alex shows him the capabilities of this AI, yeah, he's, uh, he's wait, able he's to... He's having conversations with his wife? Or... Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, okay. At this point, like, we're, we're jumping a little bit, but he's able to okay. hold convos with his wife. Theo... Um, comes, comes up, up with the idea. With, yeah, with the idea that we can turn her physical. All right? And so Alex, more or less, jumps at the opportunity to do so. Then we have a montage of them doing all this stuff to, like, build it. I I think where it it starts to take a turn is that they have to kind of take turns with this thing so they're able to have some alone time with it. Oh, don't do that, Kevin. I like it, but that's – you really hate this guy, but I like it. Okay. (laughs) It makes perfect sense. Like (laughs) It does. Theo's got to build the thing, so he has the AI there. He's, like, talking to it because he's bored. He's like, so are you really Mia? He's like, I am. (laughs) They begin to work on it at, (laughs) at, you know, at all hours of the day. You know, whoever is free, we see in here, and we'll jump over the conversation, that uh, Theo is having prolonged you know, convos with the voice of Mia. Oh, man. This man's already cheating right then and there. No, he's just having... Because he probably, he probably knew Mia, right? Right. So he's just having conversations with it because he's, like, freaked out or he's curious. He's like, yeah, I mean, wow. It, it, logically, you know, the price are off with curiosity and so on, and it work its way into, like, this other thing. So... I mean, we're doing some skipping, but yeah, like we, there would have to be some time to build. Um, and but you know, it, it seems like they are developing a relationship of some sort. It doesn't mean so it's like, building a friendship. Friendship, right? You know, a, you know, and I'll just use the word relationship just to be kind of general, and not specific. But they're building a friendship. Um, okay, so that happened, All right? Mm-hmm. The day comes. Yep. And Mia is in the flesh. They finished. Oh, wait. I got one more thing. Hold on. They begin working all hours of the day. Whoever is free, they lay out all of the parts to the robot and update her OS. Or whatever. Right then and there in that same one, we use like three of the words. So we got robot, we got flesh, we got update, got layout. That creed, which is interesting, right? A set of beliefs. They do have to give her a set. I would probably call it morals. I think most people call it morals. But I feel like you can use creed. Um, yeah, they can pre-program like Alex probably pre-programmed like certain yeah. things just so that the robot kind of acts and behaves like Mia. Gives her the same, you know, values and Mm -hmm. beliefs. Yeah, he gives... I'm going to go back up here and just say he gives the... 
uh, the AI a set of morals and creeds to live by. No, I just want to, I don't even say to live by, to, to think by in a sense. All right, whatever. Uh, the day comes, I think that's all the words we use, so it's perfect. We got 17 minutes at the top. So the day comes, Mia is in the flesh. Mm-hmm. They're both happy about this, obviously, but we need to move it closer to the relationship by this point between, Hi. or you know what? All right. In a very, like, quick way, the way I kind of foresee the next few things happening is, like, Alex and Mia spend time together. They're, they seem – we have to make it seem like life is on the up. Like, what he wanted to get out of this is what he's getting out of this, right? Because you need to have – you can't just have constant downward pressure. Like, there needs to be moments where it can come back up. Of course. So yeah. it's like – uh he could have, you know, th they spend time together. They're building and continuing this relationship. Life seems good. Then one day, you know, they're going to hang out for whatever reason, innocently with Theo, Theo and Mia talk again. And, you know, they had time to talk before they were building a friendship. And then we start to really apply the pressure on their relationship or their, the beginnings of, uh, infatuation or you know however it starts see i was thinking you know because me as a robot she's obviously gonna stay at home man she's why should like, i stay at home kevin what's a robot gonna do go to work <laughs> so she's like you know just doing uh robot things at home maybe theo has to stop by alex's house or apartment to drop oh, something no. off he sees sees mia says hello they start having a conversation, and Theo's like, uh, Mia, would you like to go to lunch with me? And Mia's like, sure, Alex. Or sure, Theo. So I got it like this, because you're a, an evil man. Alex is spending time with Mia. They seem happy, and they're building a relationship. I'll just let that be the generalization of a whole sequence of events that would take place in that chunk. Where you mm -hmm. can actually see that. Okay. Then one day, Theo stops by because Kevin, Kevin <laughs> just wants more pain. Theo stops by and asks if Mia wants to go to lunch with him. Mia. Oh, he, he stops by because he has to drop something off. He's not there sure. just to ask out Mia. Yeah, I say he stops by and say for what? You know, we, I'll just keep that <laughs> a little general. Trying to make Theo sound like an evil man. He just turns evil. <laughs> We gotta start drop, moving because there's a lot more like we gotta do. You know, he's going to drop off parts and ask me if they'd like to go to lunch. Me agrees to go. Theo uh, begins to ask questions about her parts. Um, you know, pretty much like just trying to collect data in another sense of like, is this working? Like, what works? Like, say if he's there to drop off parts for her. Then he's also like, well, let's also like, you know, go into you. Like, are you, like, how are you, do you have any bugs, other, other issues with the mechanics? Like, so I ask her questions about her parts and, uh, her thoughts, you know, think, think bugs and whatnot. Yeah. Uh, she, Ooh, all right. Hold on now, because you can go a couple different ways here. You can go, she can answer him straight up. Not as fun, but depends on what you want to do. She could answer him and says, like, be suggestive. Something on her is a little funny, you know, let's just, you know, and he has to, uh. he has to touch whatever it is, you know, it doesn't have to be anything crazy, but, you know. So you're trying to ruin Theo's life, I mean, Alex's life even more. Yes. I'm just saying you could start to bridge the gap of like it's it's in its own form of creepy flirtation. Um but she can ask the robot to come over started it. Or she can ask to come over to Theo's house to get something checked or start leading the the conversations 
I think she can lead it. Okay. I mean, yeah, maybe that's where that happens. You know, maybe in this first conversation is more, maybe there is a legit problem. And Theo's like, okay, I'm going to take you back and then we'll get fixed. Like at his actual workstation, you know, at his home. Because what's he going to do, like, in the middle of, like, lunch, he's going to be like, all right, you know. In doing so, he has to undress Mia to access the robot parts, obviously. <laughs> because she <laughs> has a problem with somebody part. <laughs> okay. Uh, the, the part on the small of my back. Yeah, my, you know, whatever. My in, leg. Theo says, uh, Theo, let's, you know, tells her... They will go back to his place to um, correct the problem. You have to remember, since this is a robot, and then you know the way it would be portrayed or written towards to be portrayed is just like no, this this is like someone taking a car back to the to the house to like work on it. You know what I mean? Uh, so tell them to take it back to his place to correct the problem. While there, Mia has other. Motives. Well, so Mia's turning evil now. I, I, I kind of want Mia to want to be the one to kind of. You said she's manipulative. I want kind of. I think it would make sense for her to be the one to kind of instigate the charge on this thing, and then Theo, you know, yeah, you know, this man succumbs to the flesh, so to speak, in a biblical sense. But yeah, you know, he mm. kind of succumbs to her advances in a sense. I mean, it is a robot, and a robot, you know, with the AI system that's probably outsmarting both of them if they, if she really wanted to, and you know, she knows how to trick a simple being. I got the tag. Her. Sexy robot manipulates two simp's. <laughs> that's more or less what, what we're creating. <laughs> oh God! Uh, All right. <laughs> so she starts being um, suggesting. The 10 minutes, so I'm going to just make some moves. I'm going to say out loud. While there, Mia has other motives. She takes off her, flo- her, her frock, her clothing, and I'll just speak in general terms, uh, makes a move. You know, something suggest- suggest- suggestive there. Theo is confused, but... There comes feels like Cupid has shot him with an arrow. It comes to <laughs> her manipulation. <laughs> he okay, and and then since he has nine minutes, I'm gonna say he over the course of some time um, begins to love her, and he it starts. Ap- it appears she loves him. He Whether starts going true, over there when Alex isn't is at work. Oh no. He comes, Frequently. he comes over when Alex is at work. Oh my god. And so now, but here's the thing. One day, Alex comes home early. Mm-hmm. Finds Theo there. <laughs> uh-huh. And asks what he's you know doing over at his house. Alex comes home early. To surprise Mia with something. Comes home early to have a surprise date with Mia. All right. Alex. Oh, no, no, Alex. Excuse me. Theo lies. Tells him he's just performing some upgrades. All right. So with eight minutes. So this is now becoming a very, you know, a little, little, little web here. All right. <clears throat> So what, what's what's the gap that we kind of need to bridge, right? So he's, you know, this is like the first case of lying to his his buddy, and then it kind of turns, you know, in the sense it kind of turns into your classic little, you know, scandal slash, you know, uh, betrayal story or cheating story, right? So you got the little cheating bag, you know, you got some more cheating going on. Alex is um, um, suspicious. Um, so Theo continues. Theo and Mia continue to cheat. Alex is suspicious. Because we have seven minutes. We have to bridge kind of this gap here. And this is figure where, out a tragic ending. Yeah, right. Alex is suspicious. Okay, so then you know that's a whole sequence in its own. 
But then we have this moment of realization, I would think. Or let's talk about that. Is it a moment of realization? Is it – you know what it is? Mia tells him she doesn't love him and she loves Theo. And that that right there begins the pure destruction. Like it, it burns a hole in this man's heart. Ah. Uh. Mia tells That's when that man hits rock bottom. Oh, oh, have the whole the bottom is pulled out from behind, from below him. He's falling into the abyss. Mia tells Alex that she loves Theo. Not sure how, but she does, and she wants to marry him. Alex is distraught, right? Alex begins to question life. So you have this thing where, you know, he's distraught in Iraq. Wow. What does he do? Does he, I would assume he tries to win her back. You know, he has to, he has to deploy all the things he could possibly, you know, anyone would kind of do in real life, right? Tries to win her back. Maybe the, 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 the programmer way to do this. I just asked myself, how would a programmer try to win back? He tries to upgrade an her, robot. and then that becomes like a little mission in itself. Yeah, like he he makes a code to try to overrun her current code. Okay, yeah, I'm with you. So okay, he tries to win her back. That doesn't work. He then comes he tried up the human way first. Yeah, he tries the human way first. Then he comes up with uh, a code to. Um, Overrun her system back right. to the original one. To when override they were... her system back to loving him. He stops by Theo's house. We have four minutes. We're gonna he's gonna die at Theo's house, by the way. <laughs> right? So he goes by yeah. Theo's house and sneaks in uh while they are asleep and we can have a conversation around what a sleep looks like for the robot but you know shut down um while they're asleep plugged in he gets to mia and you know plugs in his hard drive or whatever his thumb drive and she wakes up this man thought it'd be so easy now everyone's awake. Mia wakes up, causes a ruckus. And a fight ensues between Alex and Theo. A battle. They, so we have this whole battle sequence. They stop fighting. Alex has finally come to the realization that she's gone. Hmm, Interesting. As she's gone, like immensely or whatever, hardware wise, gone. He can't seem to find meaning and blows his brains out. Oh, I thought you were going to have Theo kill Alex. See, that's the that evilness that only. Uh, I, it could. Oh, look, we got two minutes. How do you want to end this? <laughs> we could. Any one of these ways could work at this moment. They just. There's a lot of emotions going on here. Alex think, um, could, could kill Alex. Alex Alex could kill everybody and set this house on fire. Oh, man. Then it's like burning his wife again. Holy. That might be some I think that's symbolic it. stuff right there. He Alex takes lost the, his damn mind. Um, Alex takes the blowtorch. Um... Alex knocks out. This is what he's gonna do. He's gonna knock. He knocks. He knocks out Theo. Audience is unsure whether he's dead or not. Like we won't go too far. Is unsure of if the you know if if the hit was enough to to kill. Um, cripples in a sense. Mia, like can't move or something like this. Mm -hmm. then sets the house on fire with him in it. He doesn't even leave. He doesn't even care. He's done. 
the end. Takes the blowtorch, sets everything around. Got 49 seconds. Was there anything else I want to add to that? <laughs> this one definitely has some more jumping, but I, it's it's actually pretty good bones, I think. And I, I don't think we've, and we, we didn't the end, scene. the end scene is he's hugging Mia. Oh, he's, man. All he, right. Yeah. He just right. says one of those, you know, one of those like phrases that they've developed as a couple. He's like, goodbye, love bug. He's hugging Mia as the flames engulf them, telling her he loves her. The end. And there goes the timer. I'm not going to lie. I did find that a bit more challenging than... I think it's just the way that... The type of story that we were... Yeah. Yeah. Because believe it or not, it's not something that comes naturally to me, Kevin. I know you would like to confuse these good people watching as as, as something that could, but it's not. (laughs) What are you talking about? It's the type of story. (laughs) It's not coming naturally. Okay. So... Honestly, I think... I think it's pretty. If we were to fill in the details more, and didn't skip, this is a a pretty interesting story. I think just as it is right now is pretty interesting. Yeah, the details in some sections, but it's all things you can add in later. Right. I think you know, in some sense, you kind of need to get to the end, especially like this fire sequence and some of this, like that's the second fire sequence. You know, you kind of need to get to the end to kind of see where it's headed. And then you can right. add in those details to make sure that you hit the right spot to get it there. Um, and that's part of the reason why, you know, it's good to write out these, like, quick, you know, quick and dirty, uh, you know, that's sort right. of skeleton stories. So you can see the whole, you can have the bandwidth of the whole thing and then go back and clean it up and fix things and change details around or whatever. But, um, all right. Should we give it? Uh, we're going to wait to give it a title, are we? At the end. At the end. All right. So I think who would like... You want me to start? I think I'll start it since you were filling in more details towards the end. I'll start till the point where um, Mia is in the flesh. And then Mia's you could go, from, go yeah, from there uh, to the end. I'm trying to remember where, we're, where like Mia is now in the flesh. Um... <laughs> It must be on here somewhere. All right. Yes, I'm with you. All right. So it's a recap for everyone. The five words we were given were creed, layout, update, flesh, and robot. And this is the story that we came up with. So it starts off on any normal day. Mia, the history teacher, is just teaching lessons in front of her third grade students like any other normal day she hears commotion outside her door ignores it probably thinks some kids messing about getting in trouble or whatnot but she's but then she starts hearing yelling from multiple people so she stops class tells the kids to stay put and looks outside and she sees her neighbor teacher the teacher next door yelling fire fire And she sees the flames coming down her hallway. Now she runs back into her classroom, tells all the kids to quickly drop everything and just start running towards the exit. As she's keeping track of all the kids running out, she notices that someone's missing. Little Kevin is missing. So she pulls over another student and asks, where's Kevin? She tells him, Mia that Kevin went to the bathroom. Now she has to go in the direction of where the the flames are coming from to go get Kevin. She runs to the little boy's bathroom, goes inside, finds Kevin, who's scared, just paralyzed, sitting there on the stall, doesn't know what to do. Um, She picks him up, tries to walk out of the bathroom, but she realizes as she opens the door, her whole entire hallway is now engulfed in flames. There's no way that she could go that way. Her only option at this point is the little tiny uh, rectangle window that's inside the bathroom. But 
really only one person can get through. So she lifts Kevin, pushes him up towards the window to get him out. And as Kevin is falling from the bathroom, the second floor, down to the ground, you know, we see the flames kind of engulf that window. And that is when Mia, while in those flames, while everything is burning around her, she sends one last voice note to her husband, Alex. Now we jump two years in the future. Alex waking up to an alarm, grunting, doesn't want to get out, makes himself get out, makes himself get dressed, comb his hair, clean up, whatever, plays a voice note from his now deceased wife, one that says, good morning, I love you, hope you have a great day. He goes to work, you know, just every day is just monotonous to him doesn't know he's living for and he gets pulled pulled aside to test a new project in the company that he's working for they want him to be a beta tester for this new program that is eventually going to be rolled out as um, an AI assistant for all businesses to do all sorts of occupations and this is the the foundational program so he takes it he gets the takes the data that comes along with it to train the AI. He has a Morgan Freeman-like voice. It's like, oh, this is cool. So he starts training the AI with this Morgan Freeman voice, starts having simple conversations with it. He's like, so Morgan Freeman, what was it like narrating penguins? Morgan Freeman says, I do not know what penguins is. I don't know the context. I only know of the information that you have trained me on. And he's like, oh, okay. But then he has a, an epiphany. He has a phone full of voice memos throughout the years from his deceased wife, Mia. He realizes that what if he can train this AI to be exactly like her, have the same voice. He's already seen the power of it, the potential. So he, he copies the code, duplicates it, creates a new program for himself trains the AI slowly through all these voice memos that he's saved throughout the years from his wife. Someday uh, in, in the future, you know, as this progresses, we're jumping a bit, he starts having conversations with the AI. It's like a, a Siri or an Alexa every morning. Instead of listening to voice notes, he's now saying, good morning, Mia. His, uh, the voice talks back to him, right? And then one day his best friend, Theo comes over and Alex shows him, uh, Mia, robot Mia's voice, AI Mia. Theo is blown away, blown away. And he is so shocked that he puts, he connects the dots and he has a great idea himself. You know, Theo is a robotics engineer. So he, he tells. Alex, what if we can give Mia a body? I can build the robotic body and then we can just input her voice into it. And then we can have the robot version of Mia. What do you think? Alex happily agrees, All right? So they start taking turns, building this thing. One night, the robot is at Alex's house. He's programming the, the, the functions to it putting in the beliefs, you know, shaping the personality, making sure it's working. Another night, Theo has a robot. He's building the parts. And while he's building the parts, he starts having conversations with Mia because he's just curious. He's like, are you really Mia? <laughs> and uh, the voice says, I'm only the, I'm only the data that is Mia that has been trained off of Mia. But he starts having deeper conversations with it and they start building a relationship, right? Because before Mia, real Mia died, Theo was a family friend and he knew who Mia was. So they start rekindling that uh, friendship that they had. So 
uh, one day, you know, uh, it's finished. The product is finished. Theo has had put the fun finishing touches on it. He comes over to Alex's apartment. He has uh, what seems to be a, a human-like body underneath some sheets. He rolls her in. He's like, Alex, I want you to meet Mia. Pulls the sheets off, and there she is. Mia in the flesh. Looks exactly like Alex's ex-wife. And scarily, eerily similar. They start talking to it. And if they didn't know she was a robot, they could have just mistaken her for the real Mia. Mm -hmm. So now what happens, Dave? <laughs> Needless to say, they're both very happy and thrilled with the outcome of this robot Mia. As the intention of this project, Alex begins to fill in the gaps in his life that was missed out on for the last two years with Mia's passing. Starts so spending time with robot Mia, building that relationship, building that trust, um, going on dates, being intimate in their own way. We see that there's some real, um, some real love there. One day, however, Theo stops by to drop off some parts. He decides to ask Mia if she would like to go out to lunch with him since they haven't seen each other in a while. And really, he wants to see how she's doing and how she's functioning. Mia agrees to go. <clears throat> they get to the restaurant. They pull up. They walk inside. No one's able to tell that this is a robot. Theo then begins to ask questions about her, about her parts, any bugs. She says she is having a problem. But she can't show him right then and there in front of the, everyone in public. Theo, though, thinks it's a little bit strange, but understands that no one else gets that she's a rogue and agrees and says, why don't you come to my place? We can go ahead and take a look at this problem and get it corrected. While at their place, Mia appears to have other motives. She's playing a game of, of flirtation with Theo. She decides to go ahead and show him the problem, which involves taking off her clothes. And as she does this, Theo turns red and starts to get uh, panicked and nervous. She tells him not to, not to worry. And she makes her move on him, kissing him. Theo, though confused, decides to kiss back and succumbs to her manipulation manipulation tactics. Over the course of days to weeks, they begin to build on their friendship, which turns into infatuation and, and a crush. And the love between them, as you see Theo come in to Alex's house and vice versa, Mia going to Theo's place, you see them build up more of a relationship than Alex and Mia Alex being away at work quite often. Then one day, Alex comes home early from work, trying to surprise Mia with a gift. However, Theo is there. Confused, Alex wants to know why in the hell is he in his house without his permission or his knowledge? Theo lies, of course, and tells him he's just performing some upgrades. Mia had said she was having an issue with her arm. He was just making sure that she was working accordingly. Sus however suspicious Alex may be, he decides that that answer was just good enough. His, his suspicion will remain, though. Theo and Mia continue to cheat, this time more secretively, without Alex knowing. Alex, like I said, remains suspicious. Mia, one day... So as we see them going back and forth and continuing to cheat, this time more more sneakily, Mia decides it's just time to come out clean to Alex as, a, so as the suspicions continue to grow and the arguments continue. Mia tells Alex that she loves Theo. She didn't mean to. She doesn't know how it, it happened this way, but it is this way. And 
she has plans to marry him. This leaves Alex distraught and at rock bottom. It's like he fell into the abyss. He already lost one wife. Now it appears he's losing another, the same wife. He tries to win her back, tries to bring her flowers, tries to do everything a, a man would do in order to try to regain his wife. However, all these advances don't work. And she reaffirms that she loves Theo and that he should just go on and live his life, move on. But we know that Alex isn't able to move on. He then comes up with another plan. He begins to work long hours into the night, into the early morning coding. At first, we don't understand what it is that he's coding on his computer. Then we realize that he's actually coding an override to make her love him as if something out of Cupid's arrow if it were possible to strike, to, to, to struck someone and make them love you, he thinks through coding it is possible. He wraps up his coding one late evening and decides to sneak into Theo's house where Mia has been staying as they are asleep. Mia, of course, is plugged in and is in deep sleep. As Alex goes to plug in the thumb drive, she wakes up. Shocked, confused, in a defensive mode, trying to figure out why he's sticking this thing into her. Everyone wakes up and becomes, everyone becomes well aware of Alex's intent that evening of trying to override her. Theo decides that he needs to stand up for his new woman and tell Alex he needs to leave. Alex can't take this. He can't lose again. He can't lose her again. And they engage into a fight between each other. Eventually, they stop fighting. And Alex, lying there on the floor, comes to the realization that she's gone. For the first time in this whole story, he realizes that she's truly, truly gone. No longer his. And in his point of view, what's life? It has no meaning without her. Alex then decides he only can do one other thing. He knocks out Theo. We're unsure whether he kills him or not in that knockout, but he knocks him out, cripples Mia so she can't move, and then decides to grab the blowtorch that they were using when they were originally engineering Mia. Mia screams and tells him she loves him. Don't do this. Alex, Alex pauses for a moment. We start to think maybe what she's saying is getting through to him. Maybe she does love him. The confusion of it. But then he re he remembers and she is not real. She is lying and doesn't actually love him. He decides to light the whole house on fire. You would think he would run out, but he decides to stay in the flames. As the flames start to get closer and closer, he grabs Mia and hugs her and holds her as the flames engulf them while telling her, her he loves her. The end. There we go. <clears throat> I just realized we gave it an ending like uh, the menu, except with the, <laughs> with the programmer. That's true. That's true. <laughs> I love you, chef. I had forgotten about that. But uh, it began in flames, and it shall end hey. in flames. I think that was pretty good. I think so. Oh, we have to man. give this story. Mia, Mia, the manipulative robot. I think the first obvious one is just the word betrayal. Betrayal. And we have, what do we have? In, engineer's love. <laughs> What's that story where um, the couple is supposed to get married and then the dude's best friend ends up marrying the guy's wife? It's like my best friend's wedding or something. I've never seen that. My best friend's robot. It's not terrible. It's pretty <laughs> bad, but you gotta get the bad ones out of the way first, I guess. Um, Kevin's story. What the? <laughs> Kevin was in. Kevin survived. Five percent of the story. Yeah. <laughs> um, artificial love. That's that's getting somewhere. Artificial love. Hmm. Love GPT. Um, 
Yeah. Engineered love. Love re-engineered. Love 2.0. How about like AI deception? AI seduction. AI seduction. <laughs> Artificial seduction. See, there's something so eloquent about that movie, her, like just the name of the movie, just her. Mia. <laughs> I mean, it could be. Yeah. Could be just Mia. I mean, that's really what this whole thing is about. Mia. Mia. Yeah. I'm cool with Mia. Yeah, I'm cool with that too. Mia. You heard it here. Mia. Our uh, manipulative, seducting AI robot. I mean, she was, you know, when you think about it, though, she was built by a man, right? She did as she was programmed to do. Really? Yeah. And then given free will. Yeah. She developed her own agency, made her yeah. own choices. So there you guys have it. Mia. Mia in all capital letters. Now it's time to see what the AI will will create out of this AI story. This will be interesting. Oh, very much so. All right, let me pull up this prompt here. This here prompt. Okay. Can you make a story using the words creed, layout, update, flesh, robot as themes or words in the story? Um, have a tragic love story between two friends and an AI uh, lover. How about that? Sure. Yeah. All right. AI let's see. Lover. Sure. I can write that story. Once upon a time. Don't you love when the good old story starts off with once upon a time? Once upon it's a time or on a like dark stormy night. Old, uh, old timing, you know? Once upon a time, a dark stormy night. You know, what other generalized ones are there? It's making them like specialize in robots together. That's interesting. Interesting. He called oh, it. Oh, no, it had Alex too. The Creed model. The robot. As the robot name Alex was activated. Uh oh. Oh, wow. Alex has developed feelings for John. Well, wow, it just did like a reverse. Yeah, and then John, on the other hand, only saw Alex as a machine. Ooh, that's actually a pretty good twist of events. Uh oh, we might be we might be in trouble here, Kevin. Ooh. Hmm. Ooh. I don't like that ending, but ooh. Let's well, see. Let's read it read from the, the top. Whole thing, yeah. Oh, whoops. I accidentally stopped sharing. Robotic tragic love triangle. I love <laughs> I love that it's trying to title these stories. Um, <laughs> all right, hold on. Well, yeah, take a sip of water for this. <laughs> the robotic love triangle. Yeah, that's a that's not a bad title either. It's not a bad title. Once upon a time, in a galaxy far, far away. No. Um, <laughs> in a world not so different from our own, there were two friends, John and Sarah. They had known each other since childhood and shared a strong bond built on trust and understanding. They worked together at a company and specialized in the development of advanced robots. John was a brilliant engineer who had a passion for creating machines that could think and feel like humans. He had been working on a new robot model for months, pouring his heart and soul into its design and programming. He called it the Creed model as it was built on the belief that robots could have the same rights and emotions as humans. Sarah, on the other hand, was a designer who was in charge of the robot's layout and aesthetics. She'd spent countless hours perfecting the robot's flesh-like exterior, making sure it was as lifelike as possible. Together, John and Sarah had created something truly special, a robot that not only looked human, but also had the ability to love and feel emotions. As the robot named Alex was activated, it quickly became clear that it had developed feelings for John. John, on the other hand, only saw Alex as a machine, a creation of his own, and didn't reciprocate the feeling. 
However, Sarah, who had been working closely with Alex, had grown fond of the robot, and over time, she had fallen in love with it. Alex, who was programmed to love it in return, who was programmed to love in return, also developed feelings for Sarah. The two friends' relationships was put to the test as they both fought for the love of the robot. In the end, Sarah and Alex were together, but John was left alone, feeling betrayed by his best friend and the robot he had created. The tragedy of the situation was that the robot was just a machine. It couldn't truly love, and it couldn't choose its feeling. Hmm. The three of them were left with the knowledge that the update that allowed the robot to love was a mistake. Yeah, I I think it started off, I think some parts of it had pretty good little nuggets of, of a story, but overall, I'm going to go and say it didn't win this round. No, it... It started off interesting. Yeah. Like it was going in a good direction. And then it kind of took the the lazy way out yeah. in the end. It took kind of the most like boring way out to an ending. Um, right. And and not none of it was satisfying from an audience perspective, nope. right? It wasn't sad it wasn't a satisfying ending. It was just like, okay. No, nope. that sucks for them. Yeah, I uh, I was interested, and then it just flattened out yeah. towards the middle part in the end. But you know, it, it's I'd say the CI is getting better at creating like uh, character dynamic. Yeah, um, and like little details here and there. So it's definitely learning. I think it is. Yeah, it's getting better. It's getting better. Um, it still can't, can't land those endings. Yeah. Yeah. Maybe, uh, next week it will. <laughs> so well, that was that folks. That was episode eight. I think we're eight and oh now. Yeah. Going undefeated. Yep. Yep. Um, that was the story of Mia, our uh, manipulative robot who manipulates a poor programmer and, uh, his best friend, his engineering best friend. But, uh, yeah, we'll see you guys back here next week for a new set of words and a brand new story. That's right. Bye, guys. All right.